Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. We're going to jump into the charts. We're looking at some rainbow candles here. What are those high value candles? Those have to do with the volume uh, underneath the uh, candle. Well, you can see down here, bright green, bright red. So those are the down days. Those are the up days. Magenta and blue are reversal candles that uh, I believe these, the bright green and red are 200% increase over the past prior 10 candles. Magentas are 150%. Either way, they're pivots on the market typically to keep your eye on. So what am I seeing here after? Well, essentially what I am seeing here is on Ethereum. Uh, we had a massive green party to the upside yesterday as, uh, I, you know, I believe we had a bit of a short squeeze and I did say on our live stream at the end of the day, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this whole thing gets retraced back. Um, same thing on Bitcoin, but I'll get into that in a minute. Why is that? Well, what, what happened is we had a bit of a four hour range, let's say on Bitcoin and Ethereum right here. Right. And everybody had their stop losses. Well, in this case on Ethereum right above 1663 and below here, right? So what happens, stops get hit and uh, runs it to the upside, tagged the little indecision candle, which by the way, this one is magenta, right? So a pivot on the market. And we tagged right, uh, right at the top of that, you know, so that is the next pivot on the market. So essentially, um, you know, the market makers want to get that liquidity. And if they were going to do the most damage, they would do a wick all the way down and kind of retrace you know, down to that wick. I don't think it gets that far, but I think we have a little bit more to go uh, to the downside here on Ethereum. And for Bitcoin, that downside target uh, at 26.8 for a short stop, you know, probably uh, down there uh, to about 26.659. Uh, uh, but I think uh, the major area of interest on the liquidation, by the way, uh, you can see that's Oh, roughly 100, 240 million, you know, a, roughly a billion dollars. So we are net long now. And as you can see, as um, we spiked up to about 15 billion on net long positions. Well, as um, as those shorts got liquidated, uh, you can see, sorry, as the now the longs are getting liquidated, 100x levered longs right up in here, you can see open interest coming down or the, uh, you know, We've gone from 15 billion. Now we're at about 5 billion. Interesting enough. So checking in on Bitcoin, what are those levels? Let's take a look here. Bear with me. And today is Wednesday. So it is hump day. It is the middle of the week. Are we going to get another Bart Simpson pattern is the question. The question at cause. Um, and um, yeah, let me bring up BTC. Boom. Taking a look at these liquidation levels. By the way, check out Crypt Courses. If you want to learn a little bit more about TA, it's free. Start Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis. Feel free to check it out. Um, link is in the description below. And uh, okay, do we get our chart to populate? So you can see uh, massive liquidity liquidations down here, you know, on not only Bitcoin. So Bitcoin to the tune. People are net long. Well, we got up to that $15 billion mark again. And as it's coming down, the uh, liquidations are happening and interest is coming off. Interesting how low interest was. But as soon as we broke the range to the upside, well, uh, party got started pretty quick. And um, I guess I'll bring us back to this heat map, which I really have been using as a bit of a bias buster. Um, but if I want to blow this up, can we talk? Let's see if we can do that. So here was the range, right? Uh, from the, to the upside 26, three to the downside 25, seven, uh, we tagged the upside liquidity right here, shot right through it, shot right through it. 27,000 almost made it to this area right here. So the question is, you know, do we tag 28, 650 first or 26, 300? 
What's the most pain for the market? I'd say a little bit of up, down, sideways, every way that could possibly hurt the market. Um, as we are getting a bit of that right now on the 15 minute time frame, interestingly enough. So I'm gonna put up, uh, pull this up a little bit. Do I wanna be greedy? No, don't be greedy, sir. Just take the profits. <laughs> All right, uh, what else do I want to? Check out the 15 minute time frame on any coins standing out here for today? Uh, AKT down 9%. Flex up 32%. Say up 15%. You know, Flex and Say, um, RBN, is that Robit? No, I don't think that is. But uh, another one that's kind of been, you know, an outlier has been Robit. Okay. And I think that's it. I think that is it for today. Um so essentially, uh, this is an inefficiency candle. When um, that happens, a lot of times they come back and fill it. The other area I like to look for is that 618. If we're gonna stay bullish, we're gonna stay above the box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, what is it gonna be this guy right here <clears throat> on, that's on BitKit. Let's see if uh, we can see anything better on Binance. I have been finding their chart to be very helpful, although I don't, Trade over there. Hmm. So where do these bull traps and bear traps come in? We talk about this all the time. It's right at the 0.5 or the 618. What does a bull trap do? It traps the bulls. And what does a bear trap do? It traps the bears. So if you're bullish or bearish and you don't want to get trapped, you want to look at that 0.5 and the 618. As your major area of resistance, if I can find my drawing tools, here we go. Here we go. Let's see where that lines up. And that is if you are using candle bodies, um, you know, if you use wicks and you may want to do it from that low right there. But the more conservative route is to do things by the wick, uh, sorry, by the candle body, more aggressive by the, uh, by the way. So interesting how that, you know, if we look at the ultimate low, that moves this box down a little bit more. So I'm talking about this low on the four hour time frame. That's a major time frame, right? Four hour, you know, compared to a 15 minute, that's going to ho hold a lot more weight. And uh, typically those retracements as we We've been using our fibs all along here, guys. We've been using the fibs all the way along. I, I, I may, again, Fibonacci's are, I don't know where he came up with that number. It was definitely a gift from God. Uh, but if you look at where we have retraced so far, we have basically popped up to the 382. Also another lesson for today. Notice a bearish retracement versus a bullish retracement. So this would be a bullish retracement, right? From the ultimate high to the low, and you come up to the 618, and that would be your classic bull trap, right? So come up to the 618, get everybody really bullish, woo, and throw it in their face. How do you confirm this as a bull trap? Well, it's a closure back below the 382, that level right there. Very important you guys start to use your Fibonacci tool, play with the numbers as you're going through the day. I think it's, uh, I think it's a lot of fun. Anyways, um, back on to what I was mentioning. So we're going, so that would be a classic bull trap. Now, if we put in a higher low here and then we start closing above the 618, right? That is how you know that's confirmation. That means time to get, time to get bullish um, and vice versa. And I'm hoping I'm making some sense because I know I'm going fast. Everybody says, Chris, you go way too fast, but on a bearish retracement, again, you have to play around with the fib and see what works for you if you want to be more aggressive or be more conservative. Um, but overall, I would suspect even if we bounce one more time up into this area, then we do come test this box. And what would be bullish again? So on a bearish retracement, uh, sorry, <laughs> this is a bearish retracement as we are targeting, you know, the 1618. Typically, that's this guy right here. Any kind of a four hour closure back below there. Could definitely see a wick down here. Um, that would be your kind of measure move. Wouldn't be surprised if we range it a little bit more um, 
Open interest has come down significantly, I believe. Let's check in on open interest. I got to add that ticker to my um, trading view. There is a nice little symbol. I can see the dollar is starting to rally. We're talking about economic data that came out yesterday. It was S&P manufacturing and global services, PMI, GDP growth rate. Oh, interesting. I, I guess I will throw this up here for you guys. So uh, GDP price index at 2%, corporate profits 1.6%, growth, growth rate. So August 31st tomorrow. Most of the economic news came out bearish for the dollar. And you can see Dixie got absolutely smashed today. And that being said, with, you know, uh, essentially, what am I trying to say? Um, the fact that, you know, Bitcoin's pulling back and NASDAQ's going up today. Not the most, not the most bullish sign, but a hope if you are still bullish. And Essentially, uh, if you're looking for another push higher, you know, this level, uh, 28.8 is going to be a major pivot. And then uh, really that 30,500 pivot, if we can't get back above there, then it's, you know, going to be some tough sledding. And maybe we, we kind of trudge uh, sideways and up, you know, holding this overall weekly macro uptrend. Had some good news yesterday, apparently, uh, you know, the guys over at Grayscale won their lawsuit against the SEC. Good for the industry. I don't, you know, I don't think you guys want my opinion on the Grayscale, uh, the GBDC. Um, I don't, I'm not going to do that. Anyways, uh, back on to what I was getting into, holding the weekly uptrend, and maybe we fill out the candle. The candle's a little bit more. You can see this magenta candle going to be a pivot on the market, um, you know, Back below there, you know, probably going to sweep this trend line, maybe even wick down, right? Don't know uh, what could be in store, but definitely a win for the market yesterday. Point for the bulls. And I think I've summed up all the thoughts that I can, um, that I can. And a lot of these altcoins, just beware, guys. They're going to retrace their entire retracement. However, pretty fair uh, setup here for XLM right? Daily trend line broken. Is that actually, I'm not doing this a justice. Let's get rid of this box here. Get rid of these lines. Just looking at a straight chart here for XLM, which I've been saying it to everybody in my office and, uh, the XRP army is not going to love me for this one either is XLM, but Overall, this is bearish. Although we are starting to break out and, you know, back above this pivot, 13 cents. Okay, but as long as we're below there, I think pressure is down. Probably going to test this trend line. These awkward trend lines off the first two major pivots are usually pretty uh, important. The first two. So there we go. That's lining up a little bit better. Got the test, the retest back below here and it's XLM's gonna come down probably pretty hard. Do the full retrace. I think I think XLM and XRP end up somewhere around here. So um okay. Enough for the party news today. I think that's it. I'm gonna leave you also taking a look at gold popping up as the dollar's gone down. <clears throat> so I didn't touch on the dollar here. Doing a sloppy job today guys. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've got the dollar definitely uh, broke the trend line coming out for the retest. That's exactly what we said. And we said, if the dollar comes down, Bitcoin should bounce. However, the dollar came down again today and Bitcoin did not bounce. So either this is going to happen, right? NASDAQ is pulling out a fake out move. And this W, to me, I mean, technically speaking, as long as we're above that wick, we're heading up to the highs here. To me, this looks like this party wants to get back to the high, but you know, this is the last level, the last line in the sand back above here. Obvious, you know, everybody can say, but to me, that looks like a confirmed W. Higher low, boom, you're you're looking to, you know, at least target this pivot. This, if I had to guess, so that's the bullish case scenario for Bitcoin right now and Ethereum. Um, if Bitcoin, but 
the thing is Bitcoin just hasn't been participating in the rally at all. And we were looking for this one to come down a little bit more. So market reversed on us there. Dixie uh, providing the relief rally. Economic news coming in the rest of the week. I'm not sure. Today's Wednesday. Sometimes things get a bit exciting around the midweek. Thursday is typically a down day for Bitcoin <laughs> and crypto markets in general. Um, overall, if open interest doesn't, uh, you know, if we don't put in a higher low and a higher high, we need a trend reversal on the daily. Right now we have lower lows, lower highs. Daily's down, weekly is still up. So we will see a very, very interesting week. Also, daily volatility is still declining. So this is a mean reversion bounce. Also, you got the four hour here. Yeah, it says a little bit more pressure down. Goose in the odds in the favor of the bears for the rest of the day. Open interest, the other thing I brought here. Yeah, nothing, nothing to write home about on the open interest front. All right, I'm done for today, guys. Have a blessed one. Take care. We will see you back tomorrow. Take care.